Hi there, welcome back to Duke Scopy TV, I'm Ben Jones. The election in Greece is fast approaching and on the line with me to discuss the potential implications is Denai Kyriakopoulou from the Centre for Economics and Business Research. So Denai, Greece goes to the polls on Sunday, what should we expect to see and what are the implications for its economy? Is Greece's exit from the Eurozone a likely scenario in your view? The Syriza party is, uh, leading, is keeping a lead in the polls. Uh, this is a leftist party that seeks to negotiate more aggressively with the Troika and roll back some of the austerity. However, even if it does win a plurality, it is still uncertain whether it will be able to head the next government, which requires a majority in parliament. And this is even with the 50 bonus seats given to the party that receives the most votes. This is the electoral system in Greece. Uh, there is, therefore, some risk for political uncertainty uh, being prolonged to even after the election, and the possibility of a second round of elections is also still open. But but let's suppose that Syriza does win and manages to form a government with a with a smaller third party. The fear is that the party is unprepared to weather the storm that is waiting for it. The last review of the Troika is still pending, and so the next government, which may be a coalition one, will have to finish the review and move on to the. Um, enhanced conditions credit line discussions that were suggested in the last Eurogroup, or it will have to make a radical move and open up new negotiations right away about the debt. So I don't think the scenario of Greek exit from the Eurozone is a likely one. The party of Syriza has moved far from um, the radical positions that it had in the beginning, and if history is a good guide, we should expect it to become even more pragmatic once it assumes power. So, it's, because its current campaign promises Greeks that they will stay in the euro, I think the party won't really have a democratic mandate to take a decision and force negotiations to the point where Greece leaves the euro. So, how does this all connect to the eurozone as a whole? Well, this heavily depends on what will be the EU's and the ECB's reaction to the election of a series of led government by the Greek people. There was initially a heavy bias against Tsipras and Syriza by European officials, with um, Juncker, for example, taking the side of familiar faces. I'm sure you've seen the comments. This apart from being an overstepping of the boundary that keeps EU officials from openly expressing an opinion about domestic politics in another country is also a flavor of the sentiment that uh, Syriza will have to deal with once they are in power. Now, others have been less categorical. Um, Katanian, for example, has uh, said that Brussels will respect democracy and will cooperate with whatever government is in Greece. Um, so it depends on the reaction. Now, if, if Troika decides to negotiate with Syriza and concede some room, we may see uh, the support in the form of a less strict attitude about fiscal rules. This should allow some stimulus. And um, also we expect to see more actions from the ECB with quantitative easing later today. Um, I think this should be welcomed by other Eurozone economies as well who are battling with uh, deflation or are already in deflation. Um, a strict stance by Europe, on the other hand, in combination with Syriza's demands for relief, could lead to um, Brexit. I already said that's not a likely scenario, but it could happen. Uh, this would have obvious repercussions for the euro. So far, we've seen little contagion from developments in Greece in the past weeks to the rest of the eurozone, but it is clear that a Brexit will be a heavy blow to the euro as a whole. Uh, so the crucial thing will be the stance of the Europeans uh, against the Syriza-led government, and this is what will uh, determine political developments in other European countries as well, as it will signal um, the intentions of Europe to other leftist movements elsewhere in Europe. But we can't really predict the impact of, um, that this will have on the rest of Europe. And the ECB could potentially launch QE today. How successful do you think this will be in solving deflation problems in Greece and the Eurozone in general? I do not expect QE to be hugely effective in the Eurozone um, or in Greece. In, in contrast to the US or the UK, the Eurozone is very dependent on banks for the channeling of capital to the economy. And it is also at a very different stage of the recovery compared to where these other jurisdictions were 
when they launched QE. For example, bond yields are already very low in the Eurozone and lending hasn't picked up much. Um, so there is little reason to believe that QE will be any different. And more than that, the, there is lack of support from Germany for the decision, so both in terms of official and public opinion. And this could lead to a compromise that limits the size of QE or the risk that the ECB assumes. We will see all that later today. Um, and the size of the program is already contained by the fact that the ECB have been specific about their desire. They have said that they, they intend to return the balance sheet back to its uh, earlier peak, and we know that this requires around 1 trillion euros. Now we've seen the, the ABS purchase scheme and the TLTROs. This may, at a conservative estimate, take the ECB balance sheet almost halfway there. So this sets the scene for a relatively modest QE program. Tonight, thank you for joining us and sharing your insight with us today. That's all we have time for for now. Keep clicking back to Duke Scopy TV, though, for plenty more exclusive interviews. Bye for now.